Last month I've asked people in the comments to vote on what kind of game I should make and this is what I came up with. The core mechanic for the game is the dimensional warp, letting you jump between the present time and the past time. The present takes place in a destroyed society that mostly consists of autumnal browns and orange colors, without many humans left. In contrast, the past depicts a thriving high-spec sci-fi world with colors complementary to the browns used in the present. In other words, shades of blue. Because of the artifact that lets you as the player jump between the times, the past is mostly a dead world, void of any living creatures, providing an unsettling atmosphere to the neatly organized structures. As such, from both the narrative and gameplay perspective, it mostly serves as a place where the buildings and machines are not destroyed, so they can be used for puzzles and are traversable, as long as you have the right access key cuts. Whereas the present offers many more dangers, especially the rogue robots, but gives you the access to places without the need for any tech items, for example, through broken walls or doors. Tranervice, the game is a kind of metroidvania. You're free to explore the world in whatever way you want to. The only limit is the abilities and the items you have at that point. The most overused example of abilities is the dash module for the player. For items, these are usually lab access key cards. To obtain them, you need to visit the various labs scattered around the game world. When it comes to the combat, the main gimmick is to mostly avoid it, or to only confront robots when the environment allows the player to do so. For example, using the rust inducing spray only has effect on the wet robots, indicated by the particles. The idea was to force the player to strategize and utilize the level hazards against the enemies. For the first lap, there's also a boss sequence, providing the player with a unique challenge that, yet again, ties into the core mechanic of switching dimensions to avoid otherwise unavoidable laser attacks of the boss. Overall, it was a fun little experiment to do, but I don't exactly know what the next step for this game is. Also, for some reason, the character control that creates this janky gravity physics, and I can't figure out how to fix it. So next time, I think I'll stick to making a much smaller game, possibly something that can be fully done within a month or so. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.